Earth is the cradle of reason, but one cannot live in the cradle forever. The future of humanity is in space. These words come from Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a legendary spacecraft designer known around the world. His portrait is proudly displayed at NASA, honoring his enormous contributions to space science. It's now been more than half a century since the first human journey into outer space. Over time, we've grown more familiar with space-related terms like gravity, weightlessness, vacuum, and radiation, and they no longer sound like alien words from the future. Hello everyone! But do we really understand what space is like, or are we just fooling ourselves into thinking we do? Space is still not a place where Homo sapiens truly belong, and it remains an incredibly hostile environment for fragile human life. Welcome to our channel! Think of this space as your own home. So let's jump right in and explore this amazing topic together. What makes outer space so dangerous? Outer space is generally considered to begin about 62 miles above sea level at what's known as the Kármán line. At that altitude, the air becomes too thin for airplane wings to generate enough lift to stay airborne. There's also the exosphere, another layer found farther out. It ends at around 6,200 miles up, and beyond that point begins the true vacuum of space. But for a human without protection, it makes no difference whether you're at 62 miles or 6,000. Both are equally deadly. In fact, for us, the death zone begins even below the height of Mount Everest, which is 29,032 feet high. That's why anyone venturing into space needs to wear a fully pressurized suit filled with breathable air. But what would happen if the oxygen supply suddenly ran out while you were up there? When astronauts leave the spacecraft to work outside, what keeps them from floating away into open space? Well, in orbit, they stay connected thanks to safety tethers, which link one end to the suit and the other to the spacecraft. If they were to let go of that tether, even just by a few inches, it could be a fatal mistake. They might not be able to reach the rope again and could slowly drift away into space forever. To reach the lifeline again, they'd need to push off something solid to change their momentum. Otherwise, inertia would carry them farther and farther away from the ship with nothing to stop it. In that moment, they'd be left facing two different ways to die, both equally final. And the truth is, they don't even get to choose what happens. It all depends on which way they were drifting at the start. If they drifted toward Earth, gravity would eventually pull them into the upper atmosphere. And even if there was still air in their suit, they'd burn up completely during re-entry. But if they moved away from Earth instead, their journey would last a bit longer. A tiny space rock might tear the suit before oxygen runs out, but if that doesn't happen, they'd suffocate. After that, the body inside the suit would continue orbiting the Earth endlessly. If the suit broke open quickly, the remaining air would expand and cause violent internal injuries. Luckily, there's actually a third option that could save their life in this situation. Some modern suits now include small built-in jetpacks for emergency maneuvering. With that, an astronaut can adjust their course and safely return to the spacecraft. Martyrs of Near Space no matter how you look at it, humanity has already taken its first real step toward exploring the frontier of outer space. We've gotten used to seeing space travel in sci-fi books and movies, with trips to distant planets and stars, but in reality, we're still just circling the Earth. Aside from our home planet, the only celestial body that humans have ever set foot on is still just the Moon, our closest neighbor. The Moon is, on average, about 238,855 miles away from Earth. That's about the same as what a typical car might drive in 10 years of regular use. So far, the number of astronauts who have lost their lives because of space is still relatively small, with 24 names listed as of 2024. Out of those, 6 died while preparing for launch on Earth, and 18 died during actual space missions. And, interestingly, none of them have ever died while being directly exposed to outer space itself. Soyuz 1 The first deadly tragedy in human spaceflight happened on April 24, 1967. 
It involved the Soyuz 1 mission, piloted by cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. The plan was to launch Soyuz 2, carrying three crew members the day after Soyuz 1, so they could dock in orbit. But from the very start, things began going terribly wrong. One of the solar panels failed to deploy, the attitude control system didn't power on, and the batteries drained out. The spacecraft was forced to re-enter immediately, but neither the drogue nor main parachutes deployed. The capsule struck the ground at high speed, unable to slow down in time. The impact caused a fire and the spacecraft began to burn. Almost nothing was left of the cosmonaut's body after the crash. Soyuz 11 The second tragedy to happen in space occurred on June 29, 1971, once again involving the unlucky Soyuz program. While Soyuz 11 was separating from the Salyut space station, the spacecraft began to lose pressure through a leak in the hatch. Despite the unresolved critical issue, the automated systems of the descent module continued to function, and it slowly made its way back down to Earth as per its program. Interestingly, official flight reports stated that communication with the crew remained active almost until the moment of final landing. But once the capsule touched down, there was no response from anyone on board when ground teams tried to make contact. When the hatch was opened, the crew was found inside. All three had died from asphyxiation. According to official findings, a vent valve suddenly opened and almost instantly the air inside escaped. Some experts believe the cosmonauts were already dead at the moment of separation, and the capsule fell back to Earth carrying only their bodies. At the time, Soyuz return capsules were so small that they had no room for spacesuits, so the crew flew in regular mission uniforms. That's how all three men, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Petseyev, lost their lives. The Challenger Disaster The next great tragedy in space claimed the lives of seven American astronauts all at once. They were Francis Scobie, Michael Smith, Ellison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Gregory Jarvis, and Christina McAuliffe. The accident happened on January 28, 1986, during the launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger, part of America's new shuttle program. This program was designed to replace the cramped Apollo modules with large reusable spacecraft that could carry more people and return from space like an airplane. But in the push for lower costs and higher efficiency, critical safety measures were compromised. The shuttle lacked a launch escape system, its booster rocket joints were vulnerable, and material choices were often driven by cost. All of these decisions combined to create the conditions for a devastating accident. Just one minute after liftoff, a flame from the booster burned through the external fuel tank, and the shuttle exploded at an altitude of 46,000 feet. The cabin, still intact, fell into the ocean below. Tragically, none of the seven astronauts survived. An official investigation revealed that a structural failure in the booster was to blame. A booster O-ring failure led to the external tank breach, and the crew had no launch escape system. The Columbia Disintegration The Challenger disaster slowed America's spaceflight progress and crushed the dream of quickly commercializing shuttle travel. Even so, the space shuttle program continued moving forward. But it all came to an end on February 1, 2003, with the tragic loss of Columbia. Up until then, Columbia was the oldest active shuttle, having made its first flight back in 1981. Over 22 years of use, it completed 28 missions and spent a total of 300 days in space. Columbia was the second shuttle ever built, following the prototype Enterprise. Unlike Challenger, Columbia was originally equipped with ejection seats for crew escape. These seats were only present for the first four test flights and were removed before its fifth flight, STS-5. Columbia's final mission began on January 16, 2003. The crew included six Americans, Rick Husband, William McCool, Michael Anderson, Laurel Clark, David Brown, and Kalpana Chaula, and also Ilan Ramon, the first astronaut from Israel. Just a minute after launch, foam insulation broke off and struck the shuttle's wing. At the time, the impact didn't seem serious, and the flight went ahead as planned. But during re-entry, at about 38 miles altitude, the damaged wing caught fire and started to break apart. That caused the entire shuttle to disintegrate high in the atmosphere. 
only scattered debris ever made it down to the ground. Tragically, none of the seven astronauts survived. There was no doubt among investigators about the root cause of the disaster. The foam impact had seriously weakened the wing's structure. But when it came to how this was allowed to happen, expert opinions were more divided. Some blamed long-ignored safety issues with foam strikes, while others said the disaster was inevitable and that avoiding such a tragedy for two decades had simply been luck. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with others. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.